Zhang Sarah never imagined her married life would turn out this way. Before their wedding, Tom Lu had been upfront about his father's cognitive disability and their future living arrangement. The deal seemed simple enough. Just help take care of dad, and I'll give you $10,000 monthly allowance, plus unlimited credit card use. At the time, the financial security seemed worth any inconvenience. Money could solve everything, or so she thought. The reality proved far more challenging from their very first night as newlyweds. Tom insisted his father sleep in their bed Tom in the middle, with Sarah and his father on either side. Despite her vehement protests, Tom wouldn't budge. It was the first sign that when it came to his father, Sarah had no say. That night, as his father finally dozed off, Tom's hands began to wander. It's our wedding night, he whispered in Sarah's ear. We should celebrate. Sarah squeezed his hand in frustration. Oh, now you remember it's our wedding night? After making your dad sleep with us? But Tom was already sliding on top of her. What are you doing? Sarah gasped. Tom pressed a finger to her lips, sending an involuntary shiver through her body. Show don't wake dad, he murmured. When she couldn't hold back a moan, Tom stuffed her own underwear in her mouth to keep her quiet. Despite their attempts at discretion, the bed still made soft creaking sounds. Suddenly, his father's voice cut through the darkness. Tommy, I need to pee. They froze, hearts pounding, as Tom quickly rolled back to his original position. Okay, Dad, hold on. This awkward arrangement continued for months. Then came the breaking point. One evening, Sarah had just finished showering and emerged wearing only a thin nightgown. Her father-in-law was standing right outside the bathroom door, staring at her intensely while mumbling about wanting to touch and drink. Months of pent-up frustration exploded. Get out of my way, you creep! She snapped, shoving him aside. He stumbled, hit his head on the doorframe, and began wailing loudly. Tom came running immediately. Dad, don't cry, it's okay, Tom soothed, helping his father up. He turned to Sarah accusingly. You couldn't even help him up? Before Sarah could defend herself, her father-in-law whimpered. She pushed me. Tommy. Tom's face darkened with rage. Zhang Sarah, is this true? What my dad's saying. The sight of her father-in-law's theatrical distress pushed Sarah over the edge. Your dad might be disabled, but he's also a pervert. He was trying to peek at me in the shower. Pushing him was the least I could do. The sharp crack of Tom's palm across her face stunned her into silence. He's disabled, you heartless, another slap. One more word and you can get out of this house. Sarah fled to their bedroom, tears streaming down her face as she cradled her stinging cheeks. As she sobbed, she wondered how much longer she could endure this life where money couldn't buy the basic respect and understanding she craved. That night, Sarah returned to the bedroom with a bitter smile, the seeds of resentment taking root in her heart. This was her choice, she reminded herself. For financial security, she'd have to endure. To her dismay, Tom's father was now sleeping in the middle of the bed. When she grabbed her pillow to sleep in another room, Tom's voice stopped her. Where are you going? It's inconvenient with dad in the middle, she said flatly. Inconvenient? It's better for taking care of him. Just sleep here. Tom's tone left no room for argument. During the night, Sarah was vaguely aware of touches and movements. In her half-asleep state, she assumed it was Tom and didn't resist. She even turned and embraced what she thought was her husband, slowly drifting back to sleep. The next morning, Sarah woke up urgently needing the bathroom. In her rush, she didn't notice the empty bed. The bathroom door was open, and to her shock, there stood her father-in-law in nothing but his underwear. Her startled gasp drew his attention. Sarah, need the bathroom too? We can share. He giggled with an unsettling gleam in his eyes. Following his gaze, Sarah realized in horror that her nightgown had ridden up, exposing her lace underwear. Your panties are so pretty. Can I try them? He said, reaching for her. As she turned to leave, he grabbed her nightgown strap, causing it to slip down her shoulder. Sarah's instinct was to slap him, but his threat stopped her cold. Hit me, and I'll tell Tommy. The memory of Tom's reaction to her merely pushing his father flashed through her mind. Tom had warned her one more disrespectful act toward his father, and he wouldn't hesitate to find a new wife. Swallowing her rage, Sarah forced a smile. Dad, I'd never hit you. I was just trying to brush something off your shoulder. When her hand made contact with his skin, 
His reaction was disturbing. He began making inappropriate requests. His eyes fixed on her body, licking his lips. Sarah tried to reason with him, promising to buy him milk later, but he insisted, no, I want yours. His head moved toward her chest. Trapped and desperate, Sarah was about to give in when Tom's voice came from outside. Honey, are you in there? Have you seen dad? Sarah quickly adjusted her clothing. Her father-in-law, angry at the interruption, stormed out shouting, Tommy bad. I don't like you anymore. Tom, confused by his father's outburst, immediately assumed Sarah was at fault. Did you yell at him again? He demanded. No, I swear. I don't know what's wrong with him. Sarah protested, her heart racing. As Tom comforted his father, asking gently what had happened, Sarah stood frozen, realizing the impossible situation she was in. Her father-in-law's seemingly innocent disability masked something far more sinister, and her husband remained blind to it all. In that moment, Sarah understood that the luxury she'd married into had become a trap, with her husband's devotion to his father creating a shield for behavior that grew more disturbing by the day. The money that had once seemed worth any price now felt like chains binding her to an increasingly unbearable situation. Sarah's palms were sweating as she waited for her father-in-law to reveal what had happened in the bathroom. To her relief, he only complained about being thirsty. Tom's face darkened, and Sarah quickly apologized, knowing that in everyone's eyes, a person with cognitive disabilities wouldn't lie. Yet doubt had taken root in her mind. When Tom wasn't around, his father's behavior seemed far too calculated for someone with the mental capacity of a six-year-old. While his voice and mannerisms appeared childlike, something felt off. Over the next few weeks, Sarah carefully observed her father-in-law. She even deliberately wore revealing clothes around him, expecting the usual inappropriate reactions. But he showed no interest, making her wonder if she had imagined everything. Then Tom went on a business trip. That night, after putting her father-in-law to bed, Sarah lay awake, uncomfortable with their sleeping arrangement. In the darkness, she noticed him silently getting up and leaving the room. His movements were completely different, graceful and deliberate, nothing like his usual clumsy gait. Curiosity overwhelmed her fear, and she followed him to the bathroom. Through the half-closed door, she witnessed something that made her blood run cold. He was holding her underwear, pressing it to his face and muttering disturbingly to himself. As he reached his moment of release, Sarah stifled a gasp of horror. Before she could process what she'd seen, he turned toward the door with a sinister smile. Enjoyed the show, daughter-in-law? You've been watching for quite a while. Sarah felt as if she'd been struck by lightning. You, you've been faking? His smile grew darker. Took you long enough to figure it out. When Sarah threatened to tell Tom, he laughed coldly. You think he'd believe you over his poor, disabled father? He pulled her into the bathroom, locking the door behind them. As she struggled against his grip, he revealed the horrifying truth. You're not Tommy's first wife, you know? Has he never mentioned the others? Sarah's world spun. What do you mean? There were three before you. You're smarter than they were, but if you don't play along, you won't last either. Then came the most shocking revelation. He wasn't Tom's biological father, but his adoptive one. Years ago, he had supposedly been injured while saving Tom from a car accident, resulting in his cognitive disability. Tom, consumed by guilt, had vowed to care for him for life, but there had been no real injury, only a misdiagnosis. After experiencing the perverse pleasure of being cared for by Tom's first wife, this man had chosen to continue his act, destroying three marriages before Sarah's. You're a monster, Sarah spat her voice trembling with fury and fear. Tommy is so good to you. How can you speak to me this way? His tone was mockingly righteous. I saved his life twice. Everything he is today, he owes to me. Sharing his wife is the least he can do. His hands began to wander, and Sarah's fury peaked. She wanted to slap him, but his cold laugh stopped her. This dirty old man isn't any less capable than Tommy. You must be missing something these days, aren't you? Sarah felt sick to her stomach. You're disgusting. Who cares about dignity when you can have whatever you want? His face twisted into a lewd grin. Don't worry. This will be our little secret. In the days that followed, Sarah found herself trapped in an impossible situation. By day, he would constantly harass her, threatening to tell Tom if she didn't comply. 
the Disability Act dropped completely when they were alone. Sarah didn't want to lose her wealthy husband, but she couldn't bear this torment any longer. A dark plan began to form in her mind. One morning, after Tom left for work, his father made his usual advances. Sarah forced a seductive smile. Dad, why don't we try something new today? His eyes lit up with interest. What did you have in mind? Let's go to a hotel. It's more exciting that way. She batted her eyelashes at him. At the hotel, Sarah opened a bottle of wine she'd prepared earlier, secretly adding a potent aphrodisiac to his glass. We can't start without a drink, can we? For the mood, he groped her while gulping down the wine. As he tried to grab her, she playfully pushed him away. You smell a bit strange. Maybe you should freshen up first? He laughed, pulling her toward the bathroom. Then let's shower together. You go first, she purred. I'll give you a surprise when you're done. As soon as he entered the bathroom, Sarah quickly set up a hidden camera and sent a text. He's ready. Come now. Minutes later, a provocatively dressed escort arrived. Sarah gave her quick instructions before leaving. She knew the drug would be taking effect soon. Everything went according to plan. Three hours later, he stormed back home, face contorted with rage. You whore. You set me up with a prostitute. Sarah's laugh was cold and hollow. Oh, my dear father-in-law, I thought you were lonely and needed some release. His face turned purple with fury. That woman just told me she has an STD. Sarah's laughter grew harder, more bitter. Serves you right, you perverted old man. His expression turned murderous. You think this is funny? I'll tell Tommy everything. You won't get a penny in the divorce. His voice dropped to a menacing whisper. Do you know why his previous three wives left? They crossed me just like you have. Just wait until Tommy gets home, he snarled. We'll see how he handles you. Sarah's smile was cold as she pulled out her phone. Perhaps you should watch this video first, before deciding to be so confident. The color drained from his face as he watched himself with the escort. His vulgar words and actions captured in vivid detail. He collapsed onto the sofa, deflated. What do you think Tommy would say if he saw this? Sarah's voice dripped with mock concern. A 60-year-old man behaving so shamefully. He began to plead. Please don't show Tommy. I'll do anything you want, just please. The sound of the front door interrupted his begging. Tom was home. Sarah greeted her husband warmly while his father remained frozen on the sofa. When Tom asked about their day, Sarah cheerfully mentioned taking his father out. Looking at Sarah's phone meaningfully, his father played along slipping seamlessly back into his disabled persona. That night, when Tom suggested their usual sleeping arrangement, his father suddenly spoke up. Tommy, I want to sleep in my own room tonight. I'm a big boy now. Tom was confused by this change, but eventually agreed. As his father shuffled out, Sarah allowed herself a small, victorious smile. But Sarah knew this wasn't over. His compliance wasn't genuine. He was merely biding his time, waiting for an opportunity to strike back. So she took the final step. She anonymously posted the video online and arranged for the escort to file a police report. His father was arrested for soliciting prostitution. During his detention, the STD he'd contracted took a sudden, severe turn. By the time Tom learned the truth about his father's decades of deception, it was too late his father died in custody, his secrets dying with him. With his father gone, Tom and Sarah's relationship flourished. The shadow that had loomed over their marriage lifted, allowing genuine intimacy to grow. Tom became the attentive, loving husband she'd hoped for when they married. As Sarah reflected on her choices, she knew that her actions had been extreme, perhaps even cruel. But faced with a predator who had destroyed three marriages before hers, who had used a facade of disability to satisfy his perverse desires, she had chosen to fight rather than become another silent victim. The luxury she had married into had come with an unthinkable price. But in the end, Sarah had refused to pay it. Instead of being another notch in his belt of ruined marriages, she had become the architect of his downfall. Sometimes, Sarah mused, the most dangerous predators are the ones who wear the mask of vulnerability. And sometimes, survival means becoming the very thing you fear, someone capable of destroying another person completely. As she lay in bed beside her husband, finally free from the nightmare, Sarah wondered if the price of her freedom had been worth it. 
but looking at the peaceful life she now had, she knew she would choose the same path again. In a war between predators, only the most ruthless survive.